morning class today is april twentieth how's everybody holding up i hope everyone is staying safe you're taking precautions uh... uh... every single day and today we're going to be continuing in chapter twelve we will look at twelve point five multiplying polynomials. So the last, the last time we were talking is that we did add and subtract and we used exactly the arithmetic that um, that we knew how to do. It was just like adding the coefficients, so that was not very difficult. We're going to start out with something easy here. We're going to multiply a monomial uh, just times another monomial. So we'll just multiply monomials. So we already know this. That's what we were doing when we talked about um, the product rule, was multiplying monomials. For example, what we looked at was 4y times 5y cubed. We multiplied the coefficients. Remember, we need a sign, so you always need a sign. The signs are like, so it's positive. The coefficient's 20. And remember, we added the exponents and we got 4. Example, minus 10b squared times 8b to the 4. We need a sign, so the signs are unlike. The product is negative. The coefficient is 80. I'm going to add the exponents, and I get b to the 6. So these are things that we already did. But just a quick review before we start everything else. So now we're going to extend this idea. Okay? We're going to look at multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. For example, 3a squared, left paren, 2a to the 4, minus 6a squared, plus 6. So if we just covered this up, it would be multiplying two monomials. So we'll do that, and then we'll cover that up, multiplying two monomials, and then the last one, two monomials. So what this means is we're going to take 3a squared and multiply it times 2a to the fourth. You're going to multiply 3a squared times minus 6a squared. Notice I brought that sign in. And then 3a squared times positive 6. So remember, we need a sign, you need a coefficient, and you're looking at the exponent. So my signs are like, so it'll be positive, and we get 6a, 2 plus 4 is 6. My signs are unlike, so the product is negative. The coefficient is 18, 2 plus 2 is 4. My signs are like. My product is positive. 6 times 3 is 18 a squared. And it looks like that. So we're just extending what we already know. Another example. Minus 5b cubed, left paren. 3b cubed, minus 2b squared, plus 4b, minus 9. So see up here we had three terms, here we have four inside, it doesn't make any difference 
we just do it exactly the same way. So let's do one more where I show you the steps, and then after that we will just talk about the word distribute. So this becomes minus 5b cubed times 3b cubed minus 5b cubed times negative 2b squared minus 5b cubed times 4b minus 5b cubed times negative 9. Okay? So, and you can always do that. It gives you a little extra something to go with. Opposite sign, so my product is negative. 5 times 3 is 15. 3 plus 3 is 6. Like sign, so it's positive. 10b, 3 plus 2 is 5. Opposite signs, 5 plus 4 is 20. 3 plus 1 is 4. Like signs, positive, 45b cubed. And there's, of course, there's nothing there that we can combine. So let's, um, let's look and let's have you do one. We're looking over at the problem set and we're looking at something like Let's look on page 9, 7. Uh, let's see, I'm in the wrong section here. I didn't scooch back to 9 to 12.5. Hold on. So in 12.5, let's just look in the problem set. I'm on page 879. And let's just look at number 22 here where we have 2m to the 4 left paren, 3m squared plus 5m plus 1. So instead of writing down each of the products, I'm going to just, well, probably we're going to do that anyhow. So 2m to the 4 times 3m squared plus 2m to the 4 times 5m plus 2m to the 4 times 1. Okay? We need a sign that's positive. My coefficient is 6. 4 plus 2 is 6. My sign is positive. 2 times 5 is 10. m to the 5. 2 times 1 is 2. m to the 4. Looking like that. And then also, if we have something like number 26, we have minus 9a to the 5, left paren, minus 3a to the 6, minus 2a to the 4, plus 8a squared. And I'm going to distribute this, minus 9a to the 5th, minus 9a to the fifth, minus 9a to the fifth. So we have lots of signs going on, everybody, and that's in part of the product is the sign. Signs are like, so I have positive, 27, 5 plus 6 is 11. The signs are like, I'm going to have a positive, 9 times 2 is 18, 5 plus 4 is 9. The signs are unlike, the product is 72, and we get 72, 8 to the 27th. So that was an extension of what we learned about the product rule. Now let's look at this. Let's look at multiplying. Let's multiply a binomial times a polynomial. So we're extending this a bit. We have y plus 4, and we have y squared minus 3y plus 5 you are going to have two choices here. 
and I'm going to call this method one. Method one is that we're going to keep everything horizontal. So it's going to become y times y squared is y cubed, and y times minus 3y is minus 3y squared, and then y times 5 is 5y. So I had y times 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 terms. But I'm not done. I now have to do the 4. And that's going to give me 4y squared. It's going to give me 4 times negative 3 is minus 12y. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So if you choose horizontal, it's going to look like this. So then remember, we have to combine like terms. I have nothing that adds in with the y cubed. But here I have y squared and y squared. And you also have the option of putting them next to each other because remember, you're in learning mode. You're in learning mode. Okay? So now my y cubed comes down. I'm going to add these. 4 minus 3 gives me 1. I'm going to combine these. I get minus 7y plus 20. So that would be keeping everything horizontal and distributing as I showed you. Let's look at method 2 for the same problem. And let's look at this. We have y plus 4 times y squared, whoops, minus 3y plus 5. So this method now would be go using a vertical method. And I'm going to put the quantity that has the larger number of terms on top and then the smaller number on the bottom. So it doesn't make any difference if you start from left or right. You're going to get the same thing. But I'm going to start from left, and that's y times y squared is y cubed. y times minus 3y is minus 3y squared. y times 5 is positive 5y. So now I'm going to move over and I'm going to do the 4. 4 times y squared, I have to line that up underneath the y squared. 4 times negative 3y, and 4 times 5 is 20. So now that I lined everything up, it's very easy. We have y cubed plus y squared minus 7y plus 20. The answer has to be the same. It's just how you prefer it. This is my preference. The reason um, I don't care for this one is that, you know, if there's more than three terms in here, four or more, this thing gets long, long, long. It's so easy to forget uh, to combine one of the terms or even to multiply it out. So, but it's your choice, whatever you like. Let's look at, let's look at 3x minus 2 times 4x squared plus 7x minus 6. I'm going to do it method 2. It just keeps it a little better organized for me anyhow, okay? So I'm going to multiply by 3x, and that will give me 12x cubed plus 21x squared minus 18x. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Make sure that the numbers agree. Move over to the negative 2. That's going to give me minus 8x squared minus 14x. The signs are like, so I'm going to get a positive 12. Notice I lined everything up. 12x cubed, 21 minus 8 is 13. 12 carry 1 minus 32x plus 12. 
Notice we want our answer in logical order as well. 3, 2, 1, none. You want your exponents decreasing. Looking on page 876, let's look at 3B. And notice what the author has. He has the polynomial first and the binomial second. Well, remember the rule. We can multiply in any order. Now, I certainly would still choose 6p squared plus 2p minus 4, 3p squared minus 5. And I'm going to multiply this way, and I get 18p, 2 plus 2 is 4. I'm going to get 6p cubed. When I multiply here, my signs are unlike. So I'm going to get minus 12p squared. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, has to agree. Move over to the minus 5. My signs are opposite. So I'm going to have minus 30p squared. I line it up under the p squared. This times this, minus 10p. There's no p in the, new, in the uh, top line, and minus 5 times minus 4, the signs are like, and we have this. So 18p to the 4 plus 6p cubed minus 42p squared minus 10p plus 20. So notice my exponents are descending 4, 3, 2, 1, none. Nice and organized, okay? Now let's look at number four. And this is where the author introduces uh, multiplying vertically. But I've already given you uh, three examples. So there's no, this is not new to you. 3x squared plus 4x minus 5, and he gives us x plus 4. So once again, multiply here, and we get 3x cubed plus 4x squared. The signs are unlike. My product is negative. Move over, and that gives me 4 times 3 is 12, x squared plus 16x minus 20. Line everything up. It's not going to do you any good if you put the x squared under the x cubed. It's going to throw you off. So now all we do is add 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 minus 5 is 11 minus, whoops, minus 20. So you need to let me know in some way if I have to redo a problem or if I can explain something to you. Now, when we're multiplying, a very, very common product, very, very common, is what we call the product of two binomials. That appears um, very frequently in all of your math classes, very frequently. So here we have two binomials. And if you remembered anything from high school, my high school algebra, my guess is that you remembered the word FOIL. That would be my guess. So let's look at what FOIL stands for. F stands for first. O stands for outer. I stands for inner. And L stands for last. 
So let's see what that means. So I frequently write that down myself, and then I fill in underneath it. So the first is exactly what it says. It means the first term appearing in each binomial. Okay. The outer, oh, you're stretching your arms all the way out. You're taking the first and the last, and you get P times 1. You need this sign here. You need some kind of sign. You can't just put down products without a sign. Inner is exactly what it says. The two that are squished inside. Both the signs are positive. And last, 4 times 1. Okay? So first, outer, inner, last. All our signs were positive because everything there was positive. So I now have 2p squared plus p plus 8p plus 4. I look to see if I'm done. I can add the o and the i. And I have 2p squared plus 9p plus 4. Exactly that way. So FOIL is the way to go. Students like it. Um, they're very successful with it. So if you have never used it, you need to use it now. But my guess is if you took an algebra class, you did that. Okay? So write down FOIL, and that gives me Y times Y. My outer is 5Y. My inner is minus 6y, and my last is minus 6 times 5. So I'm going to have y squared. I can combine the o and the i. I get minus y, and I get negative 30. Okay? I think I'm going to adjust this a little bit here. I don't have anybody out there telling me if uh, what I'm writing isn't on the screen. But when you're in class, you tell me, push it down, do this, do that. But here, I'm talking to all these empty seats. So let's look at this example. B minus 8 times B minus 2. Okay? Okay. I'm going to use FOIL, and my first is B times B. My outer is minus 2B. My inner, minus 8B. And my last, minus 8 times negative 2. So I have B squared. I can add these together, minus 10B plus 16. Okay, so I'm sure you're finding this to be one of the easier things that we've done. Not all multiplication is easy, but uh, foiling is generally something students like. Let's look on page 878. Remember, bring your book to this classroom and have a table set up so you can write as you see things, okay? And let's look at, um, at number 9 on page 878. Let's look at 9A. And 9A says 6M plus 5 times the quantity M minus 4, okay? Simply, I don't see your author using that word FOIL, but it's just standard. Everybody does that. The first is 6M times M. The outer, I need that sign, 6M times minus 4. Remember, outer means the furthest ones on the left and the right. The inner is 5M, and the last is 5 times negative 4. So we have 6m squared. I need a sign. They're opposite. Negative 
twenty. 4m plus 5m minus 20. I can add the O and the I. So minus 24 plus 5 is negative 19 minus 20. Okay, not that difficult, is it? And then looking at um, number B here is we're going to have 3R plus 2T and 3R plus 4T. So notice what makes this one a little, this one here, my coefficients were ones. This one here, my this coefficient was different from one. In this one here, I have a variable here and a variable here. That does not change our thought process. So I'm going to have 3R times 3R. The outside is 3R times 4T. The inner is 2T times 3R. And the last is 2T times 4T. So I need a sign, they're both the same, so I'm going to get 9R squared, like sign, so I have positive 12RT, like sign, so I have positive 6RT, like sign, so I have positive 8T squared. 9R squared, 12 plus 6 is 18, plus 8T squared, okay? Notice this, the R's descend, R to the 2, R to the 1, no R, and the T's ascend, no T, T to the 1, and T squared. A lot of this is not that difficult, but you do need to take your time and you need to practice a lot of problems. Let's look on page 879. And let's look at, um, we've done so many of these. Let's look at, um, we'll do 22 which is 2m to the 4 left paren 3m squared plus 5m plus 1. And we're going to distribute. And now maybe, I mean, it's your choice. You can show all the distributions. Or since we've done so many, you can do it in your head. So we need a sign. It's positive. 6m, 4 plus 2 is 6. The signs are like. My coefficient is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5. My signs are like, and 1 times anything is that other amount, 2m to the 4. Okay? Uh, I think you're in very good shape in that area there. Let's look on page 880. And let's look at problem number 32. So problem number 32, we have 9a squared plus a plus 1, and we're going to multiply it by 9a plus 2. So I'm a proponent of the vertical method. Starting here, we'll notice everything's positive, so all my products are going to be positive. So I have 81a cubed. I have 9a squared plus 9a. Move over. 2 times 9 is 18, but I have to line it up under the a squared. And then 2a plus 2. Bring this down, 
18 plus 9 is 27. Remember, we don't change the exponents. That makes it like plus 11a plus 2. That was problem number 22. Uh, let's see. No, that was not. This was problem number 32. There we go. My lights went out again, so I'm always struggling here. And let's look at number 36. One more. So we have 3y cubed minus 2y squared plus y plus 3 and y plus 4. So doing this horizontally, you would have a lot of terms going out like this. And then you have to be so careful that when you add that you um, get all of them. So maybe I can just talk a little faster here. We're going to get 3y to the 4, opposite signs, add the exponents, like signs, y squared plus 3y. Repeat. I'm going to do it now with the 4. My signs are like, but my exponent is a 3, so it has to go under the y cubed. This times this is negative 8y squared. This times this is 4y, and then 4 times 3 is 12. So I can add. I'll bring these down. 3y to the 4. 12 minus 2 is 10. 1 minus 8 is minus 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4, 3, 2, 1, none. We want to write our answers so that they're in logical order and that they're useful for you as you, um, when you go into the next type of problem. You have no idea where you're going to use that. So I want you to omit 37 through 44 on that page. Okay? As I see the page, I can see some problems that we're not responsible for, and you're under the gun to get enough homework done. Okay? So let's look. We're now looking at um, at what I call um, foil. So these you should have right down pat. You should be able to do some of them pretty much in your head. So when I write down foil, I'm going to have x times x is x squared. The outside. 7x, you need a sign here, everybody. We need a sign, and then 4 times 7 is 28. So x squared plus 11x plus 28. Okay? Foiling is, as I said, it's so common. Um, we need to know that backward and forward. Let's look at 52, 7x plus 3 and 7x minus 3. And this actually is a special product, which I'll talk about in the next section. But let's kind of notice. I'm just going to, you don't need to know the special product. You can always do this problem using FOIL. So we're going to have 7x times 7x. The outside is opposite sign, 7x times 3. The inside is 3 times 7x. And the last is um, 3 times negative 3. 49x squared minus 21x plus 21x minus 9. So notice positive 21, negative 21. They add out 
49 x squared minus 9. Okay? In the next section, 12.6, we'll look at this. It's called a special product. The relationship of these two, the word is conjugates. Conjugates means I had the same variables, but the sign between was the opposite. 1 plus and 1 minus sign. Okay, let's look at um, 56. So you should know FOIL in your sleep right now. Okie dokie, and this one is a little bit different. Notice here you have an X and here you have a Y. So we can't change the rule. The rule is still the same, but we have two different variables. So I'm going to have 5X times 3Y. The outer is minus 8 times 5X. The inner is 7 times 3y, and the last is this, okay? So we can't change the rule just because the variables were different. So this gives me 15xy, gives me minus 40x plus 21y minus 56. And I ask myself, am I done? Okay. Well, there are no like terms. I can't add anything. I have x, y, x, y constant. That's exactly what it is. Does this happen very often that we have an x and a y? Not really. M most of our problems throughout the mathematics world, these variables are going to be the same but they do not have to be the same, okay? This is perfectly legitimate question here. And here we're going to omit, oh no, I was going to omit, uh, let me, 61, yes, I am going to omit 61 through 66. Omit 61 through 66, okay? We're definitely not going to do decimals or fractions that are that crazy in their unlike fractions, that crazy in uh, multiplying binomials. Okay, let's look at on page... Let's look at 68, though. Let's look at this. And so we have to be careful now. We have to think about this. So what we're going to think is I'm going to cover up this M, and I'm going to say I can FOIL this. And then after I FOIL this, I'll bring my M into the picture. So the M is always just going to be brought down all the time. Okay? So I have FOIL here. 4 times 2 is 8M squared. The outside is 12M. The inside is minus 2M and my last is negative 3. So remember, this is like this. The M is coming down. I can add 12 minus 2, and I get 10M, and it looks like this. But I'm not done. Not done. What I have to do is to distribute the M over. So it's m times 8m squared and 10m minus 3. So don't forget that coefficient there, folks. 8m cubed 
plus 10m squared minus 3m. 3, 2, 1. I am done. Okay? So do we have a ton of these where we have a binomial times a binomial and then a monomial? We don't have a ton, but it would be fair for me to ask one on the exam. I can only ask one because they do take more time. As far as binomials go and foiling, absolutely. I'm going to ask several of those because that's what our math world is made up of is um, doing a lot of foiling and then later on we'll be going backward. I just want to throw this in. Um, he doesn't tell us this is a square, which is a really bad thing. Um, and he just says appropriate units. So he should tell us this is a square versus saying, okay, it looks like a square. So we're given 6x plus 2, and we know in a square every side is equal. So my perimeter, instead of adding all those up, I'm going to say 4 times the quantity 6x plus 2, and my perimeter is 24x plus 8 units. Okay? The area, you need to know area, you need to know perimeter. Area is length times width, so 6x plus 2 times 6x plus 2. And my area is going to be foil, recognize foil, and you're going to have 36x squared. The outside is 12x. The inside is 12x, and the last is 4. So we have 36x squared. I can add the O and the I, and I have my L there. Okay? So it looks like that. And that, that's a really valuable section is 12.5. Very valuable indeed. And it gave us this, the whole start on multiplying. So this video is probably going to be a little longer just because the importance of multiplying. And some are less uh, common than others. The products, the, the actual products you don't see as much of. Now in 12.6 we're talking about special products. And special products, you don't, you don't have to memorize these. If you know them, it's going to save you a little time, but you can get the answer without ever memorizing them. I personally don't memorize them, but I, I recognize them. This is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And if we have a minus sign and square it, it's x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. For those of you that are going to take a couple more math classes, you're going to figure this out on your own. You're going to see a pattern. You're going to see a pattern. So why do we have these two formulas? Well, if we had x plus y times x plus y, if you FOIL, you're going to get x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared, and you're going to get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. In other words, FOIL them both out, and you're going to get that formula. You absolutely do not have to memorize that. Um, you can FOIL everything out. If you choose to at least see the pattern when we do problems, that will be helpful. So let's look at an example, and let's say we have 3a plus 2, the quantity squared. I personally would not use that. I would go 3a plus 2 times 3a plus 2. You already know how to FOIL, 
So that would give you 9a squared. The outside is 6a. The inside is 6a. And the last is 4. This is why we have that 2 in the middle, everybody. Why we're doubling it. We're doubling it because the O and the I turn out to be the same. So now we have 9a squared plus 12a plus 4. Okay, what about 4p minus q, the quantity squared? That means 4p minus q times 4p minus q. If I FOIL it, I'm going to get 16p squared. The outer is minus 4pq. The inner is minus 4pq plus q squared. I'm going to add these two guys. And that's going to give me minus 8pq plus q squared. So let me show you how it works if you choose to if you choose to do the special formula. Let's do this one right here, the PQ. So we have 4P minus Q squared, and let me do it this way. Let me write it down here, 4P minus Q squared, and what we're looking at is X minus Y, the quantity squared, which is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So the 4p is the x, the q is the y. So that would be 4p parenthesis squared minus 2, 4p, and we have the q here. So the Q is the Y. The formula, this minus sign took care of this minus sign here. Plus Q squared. Y is equal to Q, so you get Q squared. 16P squared minus 8PQ plus Q squared. So it's your choice. You can... You can memorize this or just become familiar with it after doing many problems like that, or you can just use FOIL. Remember, FOIL is um, foolproof, definitely is foolproof. Here, when you have a minus sign, you want to make sure this is going to be negative. If this is a plus sign, make sure that is positive there, okay? So let's look, let's look on um, page 886, page 886, and let's look at number 8. Well, this is pretty easy for you after all the problems I've done. So you have a choice. You can do FOIL. That's very easy. Or you can do the special product, x minus y equals x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So now we have x minus 3 squared, and there's a squared there. So x is itself. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2 x and my y is my 3 plus 3 squared, okay? That gives me x squared minus 6x plus 9. You will get the exact same answer if you use FOIL. I just, you know, since you're not here, you can't tell me which one you like better. Uh, looking at, uh, we have this, let's go down to number 28 here. Do you feel good about um, foiling? Hopefully, um, 
hopefully uh, it's just very easy for you. But look at 28. We have a little bit of a curve thrown in here. We have this. So we would say, okay, I recognize, I recognize this is just a binomial squared. After I do that, I'm going to multiply by x. So it depends on how you're doing your binomial squared. If you're using the formula, it's going to be, remember, x plus y, the quantity squared, is going to be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So look at that. But what you have to do is you have to bring this x down. So if you do the formula, left paren, my x is equal to 2x, so I'm going to have 2x, the quantity squared, plus 2, this is my x. I have 2x, this is my y, plus 5 squared, okay? So bring down the x, and I'm going to have 4x squared, 4 times 5 is 20x plus 25. Are you with me, everybody? So I'm going to distribute this across, and that's going to give me 4x cubed. That's going to give me 20x squared plus 25x. So that's using the formula. I don't know. I just think at the math 1050 level, using FOIL is a no-fail approach. And to tell you the truth, I rely on FOIL all the time. I don't rely on memory things substituting in like that that much. So you always have that option. You might... Might I don't know for sure if I would give that on the test, but you might have that on the exam. For sure you're going to have a lot of binomials in foiling. That, is, that just goes without saying, for sure. So now let's look at um, this one here is probably the most helpful. If you have x minus y times x plus y, you're going to get x squared minus y squared. The reason, and the reason why is if I FOIL this out, I'm going to get x squared, I'm going to get positive xy, negative xy minus y squared, and my O and I add out, and I have x squared minus y squared. Okay? So that's why this works. And this one is pretty helpful, very helpful. What I had told you before is when you see something like this, if we have y plus 9 and y minus 9, if we have 3m minus z and 3m plus z, when we have two binomials and the signs between them, these are opposite, opposite, opposite. Remember, those are called conjugates. You should know that word. You should know that word, okay, conjugates. And if the conjugates, the O and the I will always drop out. So if we have something like this, 3x, left paren, x plus 4, x minus 4, this would be something probably more that I would ask. Bring that down, and you're going to say I have conjugates, so positive 4x and negative are going to add out and I get x squared minus 16. It's always going to be negative. Why? Because we have 
opposite signs. When you're multiplying conjugates, the signs are opposite. When you multiply opposite signs, we get negative. So now, when I distribute this, it's 3x times x squared plus 3x times negative 16, and that gives me 3x cubed minus 48x, and it looks like that, okay? So let's look at page 884 and see if we even need to do that. Okay, I already did some of those. Um, perhaps we'll look at page 884.3b, and we have 8 minus x and 8 plus x. So here, these are conjugates, but our constant is first. That doesn't make one bit of difference. It still is going to be 8 squared minus x squared or 64 minus x squared. The constant can be first, the constant can be second. Most of our life, you know, we write x minus 8. But here, um, this is perfectly fine. It looks like that. And then uh, looking at this, this is 3c here and 3c is 2x squared, x plus 5, x minus 5. So we're going to just bring that 2x squared down. It's going to come down, 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 and we're going to just, we're going to say that these are conjugates. My middle term is going to drop out and I'm going to have x squared minus 25. And I'm bringing down the 2x squared here. So I'm going to distribute this across. 2 plus 2 is 4. My sign is negative. 2 times 25 is 50x squared. Okay? So this would be a fair question. I, I would do that with the conjugates. Probably that would be the more likely question um, than something to involve there. Let's see how we're doing. Page 887. And let's see what we need to do. We know how to do 36. Um, let's look at just, let's look at 38 here. And you're saying, you know, why in the world do we have to work with fractions? Well, let's just look how easy this is. We know they're conjugates, so it's going to be Q squared minus 7 eighths the quantity squared. So that's pretty easy. All of us know the perfect square here is 49. We know that's 64. We, um, pretty, pretty easy there. Are you going to see that much in math 1100 and 1150? No. He's just showing you that if you have fractions, no worry. You just do it exactly the same way. Uh, 42, 3z plus 8 and 3z minus 8. I have conjugates. I'm going to get 9z squared. You must have a minus sign, and we have minus 8 cubed, 9z squared minus 64. Okay? Uh, look at number 50. It's not that difficult. 9y squared minus 2 and 9y squared plus 2. I have conjugates, so be careful now. It's 9y squared squared minus 4. So 
9 squared is 81. What did we learn? A power to a power you multiply. So we get 4 there. So you need to be careful if we are squaring quantities in which the exponent is not 1. Okay? So let's look, going back to page 885, is that if you look at example 5, the author says above it for objective 3, objective 3, he says for greater powers use methods we've already used. In other words, we have to combine them. So here we have x plus 5, the quantity cubed. Well, what that means is I'm going to peel one of them off to the 1 power, and that's going to leave me x plus 5 squared. So why did I do that? Because I already know what that product is going to be. Okay, so I have x plus 5. I know what this is going to be. Some of you need to write it out the long way. Others of you, um, if I FOIL, this means x plus 5 times x plus 5. I, d I hate skipping steps, so I'm going to do every step here. So that gives me x squared plus 10x plus 25. You knew it was 10 because I'm going to add my scoops. 5x plus 5x gives me 10x. So now I have x squared plus 10x plus 25, and I'm going to multiply by x plus 5. So that's going to give me x cubed plus 10x squared plus 25x. And that's going to give me 5x squared plus 50x plus 125. x cubed plus 15x squared plus 75x plus 125. Okay, so a lot is going on. But it's manageable. It's manageable. When you're in Math 1100 or Math 1150, you're going to memorize how to do that. It's absolutely not necessary to memorize that. You can do it this way. And remember, um, you know, the fewer things we have to memorize in life, and the other things we understand is uh, so much easier, for sure. Okay, so on the homework set, there are some that I'm not going to have you do. Let's see, let's look at 56. and So I'll just do one more of these, and then, then we'll call it a day. Okay, not call it a day, but on this section we will. This section's loaded. So let's look at 56. And we have y plus 2, the quantity cubed, is y plus 2 times y plus 2, the quantity squared. Okay? So it's up to you if you're going to FOIL this. Some of you have it memorized. Some of you are using FOIL, but we can at least understand it better. So y times y is y squared. Add my scoops. 2y plus 2y gives me 4y, and 2 times 2 is 4. So it's, it is FOILing, but we're, we're cutting it short by adding the scoops. So now I have this. So we're back to this. Not that bad. That gives me y cubed plus 4y squared 
plus 4y. And then it gives me 2y squared plus 8y plus 8. Okay? So y cubed plus 6y squared plus 12y plus 8. Obviously, I can ask you one. I will ask one on exam. I can't ask two or three. They take too long, but I will ask one on the exam. And also on this, you're going to omit 61 through 76. This was section 12.6. You're going to omit, omit those, okay? Okay, how are you holding up? I have to have a water bottle here. Now, 12.7, dividing a polynomial by a monomial, okay, dividing a polynomial by a monomial. You know how to do this. We talked about this in our rules. For example, if we had um, 35y squared z cubed and we had 7yz squared, you knew how to do this. 5, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1. So that is already in your uh, practice set. We're going to make it a little bit larger now. We're going to have 4x to the fifth plus 18x cubed over x squared. And we're saying, well, how do we do this? Well, every term in the numerator has to be divided by x squared. Every term in the numerator has to be divided by x squared. I would definitely write that out like that. So 4 divided by 1 is 4, 5 minus 2 is 3. 18x, 3 minus 2 is, is 1. So this, remember the quotient is the answer to our division problem. Looking uh, on page 890, we're looking at 2B, 2B, and we have 50M to the 4 minus 30M cubed plus 20M. Oh, uh, wait a second here. They're bringing in a hard one first. So hold off on that one. Okay, hold for a minute here. Let's go down and do uh, 2B. Oh, well, I see. I copied it. Yes, 2B. We're not going to do that right this second. They should have something easier. Okay, they do. They have something easier. Um, let's look on page 889, and let's look at um, let's look at 1b. We have 12m to the 6 plus 18m to the 5 plus 30m to the 4, all divided by 6m squared. So what that means is 12m to the 6 divide it by 6m squared plus 18m to the 5 over 6m squared plus 30m to the 4 over 6m squared. Okay? So we get a 2, 6 minus 2 is 4. We get a 3, 5 minus 2 is 3. And we get a 5m squared. It looks like that, okay? Um, notice the way they wrote um, 
page 889, they wrote uh, 1C. I'm, I'm not going to write it like that, um, but it just means to put the 3R in the denominator. We don't need to write it like that. Okay, now we're going to go back up to uh, this 2B here, okay? And that gives me 50m to the 4 minus 30m cubed plus 20m all divided by 10m cubed. So the reason I say this is a little more challenging is because I see this exponent is greater than that one. That's the only reason. You have to be very careful here, okay? So I get 5, 4 minus 3 is 1. My sign is negative. The m cubes drop out. And then I look here, I get 2, but the numerator is a 1 and the denominator is a 3. Remember, we stay with positive exponents. 3 is larger. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And the m squared has to be downstairs. Okay? And it looks like that. That's something you definitely need to uh, practice for sure. 3a minus 8p to the 4 minus 6p cubed minus 12p to the 5 all over minus 3p cubed. And let's look. It does not hurt. I would definitely write each one of these out like this. Two negatives is a positive. I get 8 thirds. 4 minus 3 is p to the 1. The p cubes cancel, I have plus 2. The signs are like, I get 4p squared. 4p squared. Then looking at 3b minus 9y to the 6 plus 8y to the 7 minus 11y minus 4 over y squared. That's minus nine minus nine y to the six over y squared over y squared and it looks like that. You need a sign, we need a coefficient, four minus two, excuse me, six minus two is four. We need a sign, we need a coefficient, 7 minus 2 is 5. We need a sign, we need a coefficient, and we say, wait a second here. The greater exponent is in the denominator. 2 minus 1 is 1. In the last one, th that actually wrote itself, and it looks exactly like that. So you want it in this form. That's what it should look like, that form right there. Okay. So now these numerators and denominators can be as complicated as, um, you know, we want to make them. So page 890, number 4, we have 45x to the 4y cubed plus 30x cubed y squared minus 60x squared y over 15x squared y squared. Okay? 
so 45x to the 4y cubed plus 30x cubed y squared minus 60 and it looks like that. So 15 and we need a sine which is positive. We need a coefficient. 4 is greater than 2. So we have x squared. 3 is greater than 2. So we have y to the 1. My sine is positive. My coefficient is 2. 3 minus 2 is x to the 1. The y squares cancel. 15 into 60, my sign is negative, whoops, my sign is negative 4. The x squared cancel, 2 is greater than 1, so we get y to the 1 in the denominator. Okay, so we did enough of those, and we're looking on page 891 to see if there's anything that you... Didn't, we did not cover, we did six, we did something like eight, um, ten we can do, we can do number ten, because we haven't divided by a negative yet, so let's look at ten, twelve t to the five minus six t cubed plus six t squared over minus six t squared. So that gives me 12 t to the 5 over minus 6 t squared minus 6 t cubed over minus 6 t squared plus 6 t squared over minus 6 t squared. So we can't ignore that negative sign. Opposite signs are negative 2 t cubed. Like signs are positive. The 6s divide out and we get t to the 1. This is negative. The t squared's cancel. The 6's cancel. So my question is, what am I getting here? Does this mean 0? No, I'm listening to you. No, it equals 1, because we're saying this goes in 1 time. So just a little bit of a hint there. We had to have a 1 there. Uh, looking on down, uh, you know how to do 14. Let's see what 18 is. You know how to do that. And number 20. So let's do one more that ends up with a fraction. Let's look at number 20 here. And we have minus 13t to the 9 plus 8t to the 6 minus t to the 5, and we have minus t to the 6. So a couple things going on. We usually do not have a negative in the denominator. So we have to be careful. We have minus t to the 6. I know students do not like to copy things over, but in this case, Dividing, it's to your advantage. You want to be very careful. Like signs are positive, we have 13t cubed. Opposite signs are negative. The t to the 6s cancel out. Like signs are positive. The greater exponent is in the denominator. 6 minus 5 is t to the 1 and that gives us a 1 upstairs. Okay? There's lots going on here, a lot going on. Now, 12.8 is not in the syllabus, so don't think I'm skipping it. It's something you will do in, um, in future math classes. And it, it takes a lot of work a lot of understanding and um, and a lot of um, just practice. So that that's in in other math classes. Now, 
remember from high school you probably did something called factoring factoring what we're looking at now is what we call the greatest common factor greatest common factor so we call that the GCF greatest common factor so we can take greatest common factors of numbers we can take them of terms as well so let's find the GCF of and let's just take something simple like 10 and 15 so what we're looking at is what is the biggest number what is the biggest number that divides both 10 and 15. What is the largest number? So all of you know that. You don't have to do any work. All of you know the GCF is, um, is equal to 5. Okay? If we had to do that, we're going to get into harder ones. What we would do is we would factor 10 into 2 and 5, and we would factor 15 into 3 and 5. And we take the common factors. Only the common factors. So the only common factor was 5. Okay? So now let's consider something that's a little bit more involved. We want the GCF of 24 and 36. So once again, I'm listening to you, and some of you are blurting out 12, and that is correct. But for those of you that did not know 12 and you thought of 4, you want to look at it this way. We want to factor 24. And this is what I do. Some people do the tree, 4 and 6, and then that goes to 2 and 2, and this goes to 2 and 3. That's a super way to do it. Very good. And I tend to do the upside-down division. 2 into 24 goes 12. 2 into 12 goes 6. 2 into 6 goes 3. Notice I'm only dividing by prime numbers. So I got this here, and I got this here. So 24 equals 2 cubed times 3. If you want, like the tree, go for it. So the tree here would be 4 and 9. That gives me 2 and 2. 3 and 3, so 36 equals 2 squared times 3 squared. If you do the upside down, 2 into 36 is 18, 2 into 18 is 9, 3 into 9 is 3. We must get exactly the same result. So now, I want the GCF. I can take only the common factors. So I'm looking here. I have 2 squared and 2 cubed. I can only take what's common. So this is too big. I have to take 2 squared. Okay? Here I have 3 to the 1 and here I have 3 to the 2. I have to take the lower one. So I have 4 times 3 is 12. So, yes, some of you knew that offhand. M to tell you the truth, most of the numbers that we work with in math, you can look at the numbers and you can figure out the GCF without doing all of this work. I mean, I'm not going to be asking you numbers in the hundreds that you can't possibly, um, can't possibly do. So the question here was, what is the GCF of 10, 15, and 21? And you would say, well, wait a minute. 
this is two and five, this is three and five, and 21 is three and seven. Do all three numbers have a common factor? No. So my GCF is one, okay? Um, I probably wouldn't ask you that on a test because I'm more interested in your getting a common factor, but that's a fair question. Um, I hope, you know, that's a fair question that it could be one. Okay? So let's look. Let's look on page 917, and we're looking at number six. We have the GCF of 50, 30, and 5. So do you see that 5 is a prime number? It doesn't even factor. So my GCF has to be 5. It goes into 50 and into 30. Number 8, we have 15, 30, 45, and 75. So once again, 15 is the smallest number here. We know it goes into 32 times. We know it goes into 45 five times. Some of you might not know how many times it goes into 75. So of course you have your calculators available. It goes five times. So my GCF is 15, okay? So looking at um, page 917, hold on here, I'm in the dark again, this is, so skip 12.8, we're in to 13.1, did I even put that up on my um, thing here? So going backward here, this is 13.1. I said skip 12.8, and then I didn't put down 13.1. So we're in 13.1. And in 13.1 on page 917, let me see if there's something I need to pick up here. Um, look at problem number 30, page 917, number 30. He gives us 12p to the fifth, and he says one factor is 6p cubed. This is called a factor because it's multiplied. And he wants us to fill in here. So this is what I would do. This becomes a division problem. 6 into 12 goes 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. And this is our answer here. It is a division problem. So that would be true for problems 29 through 40 there, where one factor is given. We have to do the other ones there. Okay? And you know how to divide monomials for sure. So looking at number 36 then, we have 18p plus 36, and he gives us 18. So what you're doing is you're dividing this by 18, and you're dividing that by 18. That gives me p plus 2. Okay, this section is uh, pretty loaded here. Um, 13, 1 is pretty loaded. 18 s cubed t squared plus 10 st. And he gives us one factor, 2 st. So you're dividing 18 s cubed t squared by 2 st, and you get 9. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. You must bring over that sign. And now we have 10 ST over 2 ST, and we get 5. Okay? 
so the whole he could have divided this up into a couple sections but it's on overload here let's get through it if we had time I would like to spend you know just a whole hour or an hour and 15 minutes on 13 one just because there's so much um, about factoring and factoring is huge as far as importance goes um, as far as importance goes in your future so I'm not going to do 42 you know how to do that uh, 48 though let's look at 48 minus 21 B cubed minus 7 B squared and he gives us 7 B squared this is positive these two are negative the signs are like I get 3 B minus 7 B squared over positive the signs are unlike so we get minus 1 there okay uh, let's look now going further like on 54 he doesn't give us that hint it's our job to find the GCF this is real life okay in real life they don't give us this hint we have to figure it out ourselves so the GCF of 19 and 38 is 19 I have P squared and P squared so I can take P squared I have y to the 1 and y cubed so I can only take the lower exponent appearing so I have 19 P squared Y over 19 P squared Y that gives me a 1 I have 38 P squared Y cubed over 19 P squared Y and that gives me 2 the P squareds cancel and I get 2y squared but remember I need a sign everybody we have to bring that sign over that is super important okay so we're always looking for GCFs practice 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 finding this this is a oops oh boy my computer went off okay If you're still there would you just take a minute break here because my computer shut down and I have to make sure I save this
So I lost, I lost my, uh, it kicked me out. So all I did was, I didn't do anything. In other words, it went off, I had, um, I had to boot it back in. But I haven't done anything, I didn't click on one thing. So do I have to save this or am I still recording? I think you're still recording. I think I am too. Leave yeah. it there. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to save it. I don't think so. Because if I lose it, I've lost an hour and a half. Yeah, no, I think you're good. Thank you so much. Yeah, you might, when you're, when you're done, you might want to uh, replay it. And you can just move the bar to see if, if the whole thing recorded. Well, that would be too late, wouldn't it? Well, no, I mean, finish your lecture. Should I just, should I save it where I am now? If you do that, then just pick it up on the next next video. That's I've done that. Okay, so I can save it right here. Yeah, and then explain on. Yeah, I would. Yeah, so stop it.